Hey there, Benoit here, and I'm so excited to welcome you to the Business of Everyday podcast. My earnest desire is that our time together each week would encourage, inspire, and equip you to live each day of your life graciously to the glory of God. Hi guys, it's another exciting episode on the Business of Everyday podcast and Today we are talking about a very interesting subject and my guest for today, Emmanuel AEC Oday, is a medical student and an entrepreneur passionate about helping people discover their worth in life and maximizing their potential. He also loves to offer helping hands to people in need. And so let me welcome Emmanuel to uh, the podcast today and we hope that everything that both of us are going to come up with is going to be of help to our listeners. So Ima, welcome and thank you for coming on. I'm very much glad you're here. Hello, Prisla. I'm glad to be on the program. Thank you for having me. Awesome. How are you? I'm blessed and highly favored. Ish. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So we are talking about being built or equipped for purpose. And there's a whole lot of talks about purpose and all that. But today we are going to talk about maybe our experience or our understanding of what purpose is. And, you know, talking about being built or being equipped for purpose. Who even does the equipping? So um, we just take it from there. But let me start with this. What has been your understanding of purpose, if I may ask? To answer this question, first of all, we have to answer two questions before we can know what purpose is. Okay. I think before you can know what your purpose is, the most important thing is to answer the question, who am I? So you need to have an identity. Then you ask where you are from. What is your source? And then after answering these two questions, you can then go on to ask the question, why am I here? Mm. Which is your purpose? So then we can see that purpose is why you are on earth. Okay. It's the reason for your existence and also the key to driving you to where you want to be in the future is what we can say purpose is. Wonderful. Okay. So for me, when we talk about purpose, I mean, it's basically what you have said. But um, when I see purpose or when I hear purpose, the only thing that comes to my mind is becoming. And I mean, that is something you mentioned about identity. Mm -hmm. And yes, so for me, purpose simply is becoming because we know that, as you mentioned, it is our reason for existence. And so if this is why I am here, then that is what is going to propel me to work at anything that has been set before me. The reason why I use the word becoming was that most people or a lot of people consider purpose as a destination. Like when you figure out this is my purpose. So now this is it. I've discovered it and this is the destination. So I'm moving till I hit that point and <laughs> I've arrived you know, but I have somewhat a different opinion to that. That is why I use the word becoming. And so as yeah. we move on, I believe that we are going to um, uncover some of these things that uh, we are talking about. And so if we are talking about purpose, we know that we don't give purpose to ourselves because we didn't create ourselves. So I just want to ask you the process that leads us to discovering who we are. Even from personal experiences, can you share with us how we can set on the course to discover who we are as in the purpose for which we are here? This will lead us back to earlier when I said that for you to discover your purpose, mm. first of all, you need to discover your identity mm. so as a christian you know that your identity is found in christ mm. yes so based on your identity now you begin to ask yourself a series of questions and it is out of these questions that we can identify what your purpose is and why you are on earth 
Mm. So from the Bible, we understand that God has created us for his good pleasure. Right. And that it is in him that we live and move and have our being. Mm -hmm. So our whole being, everything that defines us is from God. And right. once we are able to understand this, now we go back to God, who is the manufacturer, and we ask him, God, what is your manual? What is your guide for my life? And based on the answers that we receive from him, we are able to identify why he brought us here, which is the purpose. And then we begin to take some bold steps towards achieving that purpose. Mm, mm. Okay. I like what you said. You said that God has defined us. Like we go back to him because he made us and he's already defined us. So the fact that we are hoping or we are looking or we are seeking to discover our purpose. And then we realize that there's someone who brought us here. And that is God. And it's not now that we are going to place a call to God asking him, God, and um, please, who am I? Then he's now going to search in his books or he's now going to see this person, what should I let him do on this earth? It's not like that. God is intentional about everything. And first of all, when we talk about these things, I see that God doesn't create something without actually finding a need for that thing. And so exactly. our purposes exist even before we came into being. So yeah. we are coming as response or answers to problems. When I see myself, I see myself as a solution bearer, a solution carrier, a problem solver. To your point, God has already defined us. Uh -huh. okay. So we don't add anything to us. We don't subtract anything to us. We just have to uncover that thing which is covered because we have not sought after it. We are already yes. defined by God. Right? Yes, I think... Also, mm -hmm. when we read Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, this is just to support what you said earlier mm -hmm. um, about our purpose being laid down even before we came to earth. Right. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, that we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God himself had predestined mm -hmm. that we should walk in them. So before we came to earth, God had laid down a number of things that he wants us to accomplish, which is our purpose on the earth. Right. So it is not that we are now going to find something new to do. No, he, God had already laid those things down. We just have to go get to know and then we work in, in the eternal plan. Right, right. So now this leads me to how important fellowship with the child God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, because, you know, they work in unison, one God but mm -hmm. manifested in three persons. So how important, because everything we are talking about is not like uh, something that is not there. It is there. But the point is, we are hidden in Christ. Our identity is hidden in Christ. And so if something is hidden, <laughs> you cannot be surface level and expect to find something that is hidden. So my, my question is how important or how relevant is is it for christians or anyone who wants to discover the reason for their being have a, a connection with god how important is this connection or if you will relationship with god in relating to purpose you know earlier we established that you have to go back to the manufacturer and say hello say i'm here i'm one of the copies you made here on earth and I'm here <laughs> to know, I'm here to know your purpose for my life, why you mm. created me so that I can work in it. Mm. If you don't have that relationship with the manufacturer, you are not able to go back to him. Mm. Yes, you are not able to go back to him. So because God created us, we need to know who he is. And out of him, we are, you know, I also said earlier that it is out of his existence that we find who we are. Mm. So if you are cut off, you don't have a relationship with him, then you do not even have any essence of yourself. Mm. Yes. So for us to discover our purpose, for us to bless our, our world with that God kind of life, if we are not connected to the source, we don't receive that nourishment to even know that there is something called purpose for right. us to look out for and to work in. Mm. You know, sometimes when we are talking about all these things, you let me just read the scripture 
in because we are talking about being built or um, being equipped for purpose and you know sometimes we don't even set out to discover our purpose <laughs> we just set out to please god earlier you mentioned that the main thing that god created us for is to bring him pleasure one time i gave this example when i was um, having a chat with a friend because of the work i do sometimes when i'm able to create something and looking at how the thing is functioning looking at how the thing is built exactly to my specification how i want the thing sometimes it even goes beyond what i expected it to to look like mm. and it brings me such joy and such pleasure and i was able to relate that with god in terms of we identifying and living in the very purpose that god has created us to to walk in and looking at how even these simple things bring me such pleasure like that joy because something that i have worked with my own hands by the grace of god to create that thing is working and functioning well and because of that i'm so happy i'm so excited so imagine god the supreme being the creator wow. of all things and also the one who created you and i and put something in us mm-hmm. made us to fill a certain void made us to solve a certain problem made us to do certain things and he sits where he is and he watches us walk in the exact things like it's like someone will say you are blowing my mind <laughs> you know <laughs> sits sits mm-hmm. where he is and watches us even though there's a tendency that we will not discover our purpose because we are not seeking and we are not searching for it even though he has given it to us there's there's a possibility that we'll never find it because we don't look out for it but we've actually gone through the process of discovering it we found it and not just that we are walking in it and not just walking in it we are walking in it in every season according to what he wants for us and that is bringing him glory and that is bringing him pleasure sometimes there's this glorification of purpose that we just want to know like we are so desperate we want to know me to what can i do but it doesn't really have to start from that place it has to start from what can i do to bring glory to god how can god, i please yes. god today as I, mm-hmm. as i wake up today as i go about my daily work today how can i bring glory to god how can i please god and so as you constantly do these things you realize that god begins to reveal things to you because you see Bible says that when we delight ourselves in the Lord, he gives us the desires the desires of our yes. hearts. And so the very thing that you don't even know that this is something I'm actually yearning for. This is something that is good for me, but I don't even know this is good for me. God begins to open us up to certain things and he leads us in the path of our purpose. He says mm-hmm. that he is going to direct us along the best path of our lives. And so my main concern is that sometimes we are we are so bent and focused on purpose so much that we neglect the one who gave the purpose <laughs> everyone is doing this me why is it i have nothing to do meanwhile there's exactly. a whole lot of things that mm-hmm. god has spoken to you or god has put in front of you that you are not even doing it meanwhile you are looking for something else but who knows in the little things see david maybe someone would say that he, he was the one shepherding the the sheep the father's sheep and all that see the kind of job david was doing and he was so consistent with it he was so um committed and devoted to that very thing and see what the experience he had in that lowly place see how that helped him when he even became a king yes it is good to identify our purpose because it helps us live life with focus you know yeah, and life with focus yes you know that this is the path that the lord has set in front of me and you go straight to fulfill that but also we shouldn't do that neglecting the one who gave the purpose it is him mm-hmm. first relationship with god first before other things yes. are added in fact he is the center mhm once we miss the center then we have missed all other things so if mm-hmm. god is the center mm-hmm. and and we miss him then we have missed any other thing we have missed any other thing that's it's right vanity. As Solomon will say, mm. without God, all the things we do is vanity. That's true. That's true. Yeah. And Christ is the one that holds all things in place. Yes. Yes. So uh, earlier, before I started talking, 
plenty. Mm. I was going to read a scripture in Matthew 16, 18 to 19, so that we continue from there. Okay. And that says that I'm reading from New King James Version. It says that, okay. and I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gate of hate shall not prevail against it. 19. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And so I think this is the, the scripture, a little background, the scripture where Jesus asks Peter, who am I? And then he says that you are the son of God and all that. And, you know, many times people interpret this as Jesus saying that he's going to build his church on Peter because the meaning of Peter is also rock. rock. But mm-hmm. aha. So when the Bible says that and you also, Peter, you know, on this rock, I will build my church. People are saying that they are going to build their church on. But that's not right. You know, it was based on the revelation that because the it was revelation. not just, yes, the revelation that Peter had that Jesus was the son of God. Uh-huh. On that revelation, the son of God on that rock. And we know Jesus is the rock of ages. Like Mm -hmm. he is that rock. And so on that solid rock is God building his church. And that is Mm -hmm. the only reason why the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And so like as the topic we are discussing is being equipped or being built for purpose. So if we are being built and we are not being built on the solid rock of Jesus, we know that (laughs) it will like, Whatever that is being built will, will fall apart. When yes. The flood, when the flood comes. That's so true. So it is based on the revelation we have that Jesus Christ is Lord. And not just Lord, he is Lord over our lives. And so he yeah. owns our lives. And so if God is building us up, then we know that he is seeking us. That's why earlier I said, when I hear purpose, I hear becoming. You know, a scripture in Philippians 1, 6 that I love also says that, and I am certain that God who began a good thing or a good work work within you will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. So we know that God is going to continually build us until the day Jesus Christ comes. Now, I want us to move a little from here to how God builds us how God builds us, like how God equips us, what does he use to equip us and how we've, we've seen this come to play in our lives. Can you speak to this? I want to say that the first thing God uses to build us up for purpose is his word. Mm. Because God's word is the most reliable source of direction for our lives, not the word of any other so to say, prophet or whatever, but mm. the most reliable word is the word of God. Mm. Yes. So when we read God's word, it gives us direction. It helps us to uh, know God for ourselves and then we're able to build that personal relationship with him. It helps us to know um, what God expects of us mm. and then we're able to even live out our lives. Sometimes you don't even need a direct word about your purpose or anything, but even as you read the word of God, God lays something on your heart. Mm. And then you know, oh, I feel this is where God is calling me. I remember there was a time when I was doing a reading through the Bible journey and I go to Dockers. Mm. And I saw how Dockers was able to use her hands to make things for the other widows. And through that, she came back to life. I also mm. read about how the Shunammite woman received the prophets into her home and through that she was able to have a, a child. Mm. I look at all this and I was like, no, I feel God is leading me. So that even also fueled my love for philanthropy and for mm. people to do works that bring people comfort mm. uh, in life. Yes. So right. I think when we read the word of God, we are able to discover who we are. That's know so him, true. And then we get a sense of direction. Mm. That's awesome. That's awesome. You know, there's this, um, you want to say something? Yes, I think that was one way God leads us. God places us in the midst of people who also nurture us. Mm. And you bear witness that sometimes just a word from people around, they tell you, oh, I think you are good at this. I think you are good at that. 
And when you give your mind to it, you realize that God is actually inspiring them to say something that yes. will lead you into your purpose. Yes. yes. So these people can be like a pastor. This mm. can be your friend. This can be elders. I remember for me after SHS, you know, I, I was just a plain, simple boy, you know, since I didn't know much about life <laughs> or this purpose and all. So it was one elder in our church who served like a mentor. Mm. And every every time we meet him, you ask, write about your purpose, mm. write about your plans, your goals, and all those things. So at first, I even battled with inferiority complex when mm. I was growing up. But it was when I got to discover my identity and my purpose in life that my mind went on like some resetting mood. Mm. And now I, I give all my attention to achieving my purpose rather than right. thinking of what others uh, think about me and exactly. whatever. Exactly. Yes, exactly. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So that's so if true. You discover your worth, it draws you from any other thing, and then you are now focused on achieving your purpose, mm. on becoming, as you said. Yes. <laughs> that's so true. You know, like when you were just talking, I was just smiling. If you could see my face, I, I was just smiling because, <laughs> you know, a lot of us, there are certain things that maybe there are others who may have taken it for granted, like the fact that we have other people around us. It is difficult to manage people, but God knows this. And he didn't build us to live in isolation. I mean, me, if you leave me, I can, I can be, I can live alone. <laughs> but even me, I know that it is not good. That's why even God says that it's not good for man to be alone. <laughs> you know, we need a community. We need that community. Even Bible says that we are the church and we are the body of Christ. Look at your body. Your body is not made up of just one part. You know, there's a hand, there's a head, there's a feet, there's mm-hmm. nails, there's hair. And every part that I've mentioned plays a specific mm-hmm. role. And so we coming together as a community of believers, we know that this is supposed to do this. This is supposed to do that. And so yeah. there are people mm-hmm. that would even help you and call certain things out of you that you didn't even know. No, Personally, exactly. I yeah, a lot of things that I'm doing actually started for me from the church and also through service. You would find mm-hmm. me like I'm um, there. I just yeah. love to serve in my father's house. And I discovered that I had interest for gadgets, technology. So you'd find me around stuff like that. So if if I go to church, you'd either find me where the media people are. If there's no media people, then maybe you find me in, with a prayer team or something. But if there's yeah. media, <laughs> if there's media or something that has to do with, you know, gadgets and devices, you'll find me there. Even if I'm not doing anything, I'll come and sit there because I loved such things. So I was doing this uh, spoken word. I was doing some devotionals. And so I was sending it across and I was loud about my faith on social media. And even when I come to church and all that, like people knew I was doing those things on social media, but it was just purely my love for God. I was like, I've decided to use my platforms to talk about Jesus. So to date, if you go to my social media platforms, Ukan, you would see Jesus everywhere. And that is the life I've chosen to live. And I'm okay with that. So there's this pastor in a church. I I was going to my auntie's church. And so there's the pastor there actually saw something in me. I used to engage with him. And we never talked about like my my interest and all those things. But I mean, Mm -hmm. I'm always in church there trying to help with one thing or the other. And so Mm -hmm. there was a time that... uh, they had to do this live streaming, but you know, the, the laborers were few and one guy mm. who does it, he's also involved in so many things. And so okay. the pastor suggested that they train me so that I would help out when the guy is not available and all that. And so me, I was reluctant. I didn't, I, I didn't want to do it. You know, I wanted to be free. Like when I come, what is not done, I'll do it. Uh-huh. So many times I'll be there, they'll come and I'm like, oh, oh, tomorrow I'll come, tomorrow I'll come. <laughs> the long story short, one one evening and I, I got to church and I was like, today, dear, whether I like it or not, <laughs> I'll come and sit by who behind. By yeah, who? I'll come and sit by the PC and do the streaming. I was like, okay. Well. And then I, so that is where, even though like my, my passion for things like that has always been there, but being pushed into that side of like media, live streaming and all those things, 
it started for me as something that this pastor called out of me like let her do it i've seen something he didn't tell me but i, I guess he saw something that me i didn't see so he made them train me there and that's my that was the training and one no, no. and all the subsequent times and now it was up to me now i have discovered something about me i didn't know now the issue is me building yes <laughs> because this industry is not an industry where you do one thing and it will remain the same for 10 years no every day new things are coming so you have to be you know up to to task you That's learn true. yes and so i think this is something that i'm getting to pick from all of us someone had to call something out of us from mm-hmm. our service i don't think if you were just sitting in your home you know doing whatever i want to do. that elder or the person you mentioned would have seen you and then you know asked you to do certain things so it was in us coming together with other believers that they were able to see what we also had or oh, god put certain things on their hearts and then they also call those yeah. things out of us uh huh so we cannot live this life away from community so this is how it has started for you and then me to personally that is how you know it, it started for me when we were talking i mentioned how that thing was was called out in me by someone but i had to get to yeah. the point where i needed to pick it up from there uh-huh. and that is where discipline determination focus like it comes in sometimes i go like why is it that some christians when they are doing something for god when people are doing something for god the kind of excellence that they attach to doing something for the world let me put it that way it's not the same that they put in when they are doing it for god whether you are being paid or not mm-hmm. like there's so much mediocrity when it comes to yes people think so- god is the god of mediocrity but he's yeah. actually a god of excellence he's a god of when excellence people, when i meet people i tell them that god is so creative he's mm. creative and so he wants everything about his service or meaning everything linked to him should be top notch exactly excellent exactly like exactly <laughs> so mm-hmm. when i see people do things like so low level mm-hmm. for god i mm-hmm. like my heart seriously mm-hmm. it's you become stayed within <laughs> seriously <laughs> and you see there are lots of mm-hmm. things that i have learned to do basically because i wanted to do it for god because okay. i saw people who knew how to do it and they should come and do it and it's like they are flexing mm-hmm. <laughs> you, you get it so okay me to god yeah. created me and i know i'm a creative and so yes. mm-hmm. as long as the desire is there and i know i have the capacity to do it once i put my head in the holy spirit and powers me i would do it and so this has been one of the things that drive me to to do the things i do just to bring glory to god just for him to to find pleasure in me because someone that he has created is manifesting all that you know he's called them out to do so it, we've talked about god using people um and also god using the word of god to equip us right uh, and also mm. i think based on the story you said looking mm. at the desires that god stirs in us it can also mm. lead us in a part of purpose. Mm. Yes. 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 Mm-hmm. That's true. And so yes, so, so that means that we will not neglect, you know, our natural gifts, our natural talents, even our personality. Mm. Yes. You know, exactly, our personality. Mm. We are bringing everything on yeah, board. Yeah, bringing you know, everything. Our every, being, our every being belongs to him. Yes. And God is intentional about what he has made. Mm. So everything about you, your personality, everything like for example, I've done some peer counseling courses. Okay. And so by nature I'm I'm naturally a warm person. Mm. I'm very sensitive to people. Mm. And so sometimes when I sit back I'm like god you really made me like for purpose because uh, you know some people are looking for warm individuals. They are looking mm. for people who are sensitive to their needs. And how I'm able to minister to people I'm like mm. god if you hadn't blessed me with this personality people would they have been comfortable around me and that's it is just so true. you know mm. by your grace mm. Mm. that's very very true our personality really plays a role it does and you see sometimes 
the fear is that when we don't listen to God and we listen to the world, we will change mm. and miss out on what God has called us to do. Yeah. Because people yeah. want you to be like what they want you to be like. But God Identity didn't call crisis. yes. Mm. God didn't call us to Identity be like crisis. anybody else. Mm. He called us to be us. Yes. And you know the whole thing is that he made us perfect beings until sin came and destroyed everything mm-hmm. now jesus christ has died for our sins mm-hmm. purchased you know our redemption mm-hmm. he's reconciled us to the father and that's wonderful mm-hmm. but we are still in a process because mm-hmm. when we get saved like our spirit is 100% changed yes you get it but we are still mm-hmm going through this sanctification process and we live like the thing is we live in a falling world and this our body is corruptible and so if we are born again it doesn't mean that we'll no longer be tempted or we'll no longer have certain feelings that we used to have we will still have those things but the good news is that we have victory over those things and we can certainly refuse to live a certain kind of way. And so as I read in Philippians 1, 6, this is a process where God is like this whole purpose thing we are talking about. As I mentioned, it is becoming. And what are we becoming or who are we? We are becoming like Christ. Even when you read the scripture on the true vine, it is in John, yes. what is it? John 15? chapter 15. Yes, John, yes, 15. John 15. Yes, and you realize that the Bible says that God is the vine dresser. Jesus mm-hmm. is the vine. And we believers, yeah, are we the are branches. the branches. So mm-hmm. if we, the believers, are the branches, our only purpose in this life is to connect to the vine. Mm-hmm. You see, if you have a gardener, the role or the purpose of a gardener is to make sure that your garden is in shape. Anything mm-hmm. that is not supposed to be there is cut off. The flowers, everything is supposed to look nice. It's supposed to water it. It's supposed to give it whatever that it's needed for the thing to fully bloom and be nice and fruitful, the gardener is supposed to take care of that. It is not the responsibility of the branch or even the main vine to do that. And the good news is that we don't have a gardener who will go and drink some alcohol and come and (laughs) cut, cut us off (laughs) by heart. You know, Mm -hmm. we have a gardener who is perfect We have a gardener who is sensitive. We have a gardener who is good. And that gardener or that, let me use the word vine dresser as scripture uses, is God. And so if you really look at the thing, our main, 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 main duty is to stay connected to Christ Jesus. How I behave will be the the same way that you behave if you are connected to Jesus. And so the process of this purpose that we are talking about is that God is using everything around us. And Romans 8.28 says, all things, God is working all things together for the good of those who love the Lord, who are called according to his purpose. You see, so we are being built, we are being equipped through everything that we are going through on this earth. Ultimately, our character is being built. You know, patience, joy, love long suffering all these things Galatians 5 20, 22 talks about mm-hmm. this is what we are becoming and that is the fruit of the holy spirit the holy spirit is the one that bears that fruit in us you know and one time i heard this very amazing thing someone said that the fruit of the spirit is not seasonal mm-hmm. you don't have fruit on trees all year round mm-hmm. But the fruit of the spirit is all year round. It is not seasonal. Yes, because uh, when you read Psalm 1, he says that, oh, he's like a tree planted by the stream of water. So if we are planted by the stream of water, in and out of season, we have to bear fruit. Mm. So that explains why the fruit of the spirit is every time you season it, we never run out of fruit. Mm. Yep, that's right. Every season, whether you are happy or you are sad, you can produce joy. Every season, whether you are in lack or you have plenty, you can extend a helping hand to someone. Like regardless of what our circumstances tell us, we can still let the fruit that is within us come to life or come to bear for others to see. And you see, when people see us, 
when we are doing things that we are not supposed to do per our circumstance mm -hmm. imagine you are going through a very tough time and someone sees you and you're so full of joy it's so contagious mm -hmm. like it is not normal it's not normal people expect that okay you've heard some bad news you you go down and yes we have feelings but we don't have to dwell mm -hmm. in that you get it so we actually do the opposite of what our feelings or our circumstances tell us and this is the good news that we have in christ because he through the holy spirit bears those fruit in us it is not our doing all we have to do is allow ourselves give ourselves room give christ space or open up ourselves to him and he will do the work so is there any other ways that you've recognized that you know god uses to equip us we earlier mentioned about how God is able to use the people around us. Mm -hmm. And also looking at the, the desires and the gifts that he places in us. Then we can also look at the fact that his word is the autonomous regarding our purpose. Yes, I think those elements are what God uses to mm -hmm. um, lead us in our path to purpose. Mm -hmm. This thing just keeps coming to me that God okay. uses um, circumstances circumstances yes. and situations to equip yeah. and build us <laughs> because you see let's say um this galatians 5 22 i mentioned earlier mm -hmm. you've been praying to god that you want to learn patience mm -hmm. you've been praying to god you want to love more how else is god going to teach you these things Yes, you've read it in the Bible, but yes, you've read it. But how are you going to practicalize it in your life if he doesn't allow people who are not lovely to come your way? If he doesn't allow people who will stress you, like <laughs> people who will literally drain out all the patience in you. <laughs> so you, you, know, you know that I'm reaching the brim of what I can take. We should realize that there are so many situations that come our way that it may not have been God who brought it like directly upon us. But if as we know that God is sovereignly in charge of everything that is happening to the child of God, indirectly and directly, God works things around. Romans 8.28, he works things around yeah. for our good. For our and, good. Yeah. Yes. And so if there's a situation that is constant like you find yourself sometimes you find yourself in a season where like constantly you realize that you are being faced with like the things that are coming your way they are so similar mm -hmm. and you realize that there's this particular thing is what is being tested mm -hmm. patience patience yeah. patience patience mm -hmm. patience mm -hmm. And sometimes if you don't stop to actually think, you go like, oh, exactly. what? <laughs> you don't stop to like exactly. analyze how things you are going. You would rather choose to complain yes. than ask what God wants you to learn in that yes. moment. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. And so for me, like this, <laughs> this is one thing that God uses, like his word does it, people does it, but also circumstances and situations. Circumstances. Yes. Mm -hmm. So many times we go through a lot of things and we, we continue asking, why me? Why not this person? But if we quit, you know, asking the why me and start asking the right questions, Lord, why is this happening now? What is the purpose of this? <laughs> what can what? I learn out of yes. this situation? Yes. We would find the very answers that we need and we'll be able to move past that test early so that we'll be promoted to a yeah. different level you know level, yeah. one thing i've realized in life is that there's always even with purpose there's always a purpose there's always a process and there's always a manifestation and so uh -huh. whatever god is calling us out to do there will be a process for it before we see the manifestation, we have to go through the process. Process, yes. And the uh -huh. process takes different forms. Uh -huh. So, you know, Ecclesiastes one says that to everything under the sun, there's a purpose, you know, and there's a time and there's a season to everything under the sun. So if there's a time and there's a season, even the purpose that God has given to us, like I've heard that purpose is dynamic, it's not static, and, and it's really true. 
God is calling us based on our gifts, talents, and all those things. God calls us to do certain things. But how he calls us to do those things in seasons vary. So we don't just mm. come to God. We are like, okay, one time I've come. God, what is my purpose? Okay, this is what I've called you to do. And that is you go and do your thing. No, you have to stay connected to him to know how he wants to use what he has placed in you in every season because it will not be the same. Mm-hmm. And so what mm. really should be the posture of our heart in response to God equipping us for what he has called us to do. As we've read in Philippians 1, 6, Bible says that it is a continuous work until Christ returns. Yes, okay. So as part of the process that we have to go through, we have to, first of all, make sure we have a heart that surrenders and obeys God. God wants us to always be on track. He's expecting that when he lead as believers and as his children, we will yield to his control. We will trust him completely. And then through that, we are able to live for him and discover our purpose. Right. Now, um, when we read Psalm 37 verse 28, the Bible says that God directs the steps of the godly. Mm. So God delights in every detail of our lives. So that's the the posture we must have regarding God leading us in this process of being refined for manifestation. Mm. We must have a heart that's able to surrender wholly and then also obey God's leading. Mm. Also, we have to be mindful of the choices that we make. It is true that God's will for our lives will prevail, but sometimes we make some decisions which can throw us off. Mm. Yes, so we have to make sure that even there are some decisions which may appear very simple to us, but they can really transform our course. And so we have to make sure we use the word of God to make very good judgments, very good decisions about our lives. Also, I think we can talk about prayer for direction. Mm. Prayer for direction because... I don't know what we can do without prayer. Mm. Prayer in every situation, we have to make sure God is involved. We have to make sure he is leading us and we are following him. It is the right thing he wants us to do at any point in time. Mm. Yeah. And I think to also add up to what I've already said, we have to form the habit of reading about people getting to know their life stories, their biographies, Mm. especially uh, people that we look up to in the faith. That's right. Because there are many people who are in their season of manifestation now. We don't know much about the process they went through. Yes. So until you have heard that, the story about the process they went through, you always be angry at God. God, why is this happening to me? Why is this? But (laughs) if you hear the stories of the great people that we see today uh, who are doing so good for God. You will just be quiet and appreciate whatever comes to you and you you trust God with your life. Mm. Yes. So I think these are some of the, the things that we should do um, in response to building ourselves for God's purpose. Mm. That's yeah. so true. That's so true. You mentioned something like when we're talking, you use the word refining <laughs> and mm. And I like that you use that word refining Mm because that is really what it is about. We are being refined to become the better versions of ourselves. The version of ourselves that we have not even met yet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One thing we can also do is that we need to open up ourselves for mentorship. There are many people that God has planted in our lives. Mm -hmm like our church leaders, people we can learn from mentors because of the internet. We are able to come across many people. These are people we can draw from, we can learn from, who can uh, shape our lives for God's purpose and his glory. Mm. That's so true. That's so true. Also, we need to be able to um, humble ourselves (laughs) <laughs> yes. Sometimes pride takes a whole lot from us. We need to be able to humble ourselves. Even prayer. 
if you are not humble, you cannot pray because prayer is just mm-hmm. accepting that you are weak and cannot help yourself. And so God help me, you know. Mm-hmm. So even in is it first or second Chronicles seven fourteen? Which one is it? That it says that if my people are humble yes, and pray, yes, uh, yes, second, second Chronicles, second Chronicles, yes, yeah, second Chronicles seven fourteen says that if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face. Then will I, you know, this is the word of the Lord. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. So I feel like we should bring ourselves like, <laughs> you know, sometimes mm-hmm. what's his name? The psalmist, David will even say David. that what, what is man that you are so mindful of? Mindful of. You get it? Because man mm-hmm. that you are here today, tomorrow you are gone. But God is so mindful of and yet calls us in fellowship. So we should humble ourselves knowing that God is in charge. Once he is in charge, nothing takes him by surprise. And so whatever situations that may come our way, we should know that our father is still on the throne and he will work Mm. things out. You know, and Joseph said that what you meant for evil, even what you meant for evil, God meant it for good. And God definitely will use even the plans of the evil one about you. He will turn things around for your good. And so don't be afraid. Walk in boldness, walk in confidence, knowing that we have a father who cares about us and he doesn't sleep nor slumber. And so nothing will overtake him by surprise and and destroy us. No, he's fully aware and fully in charge of our lives. Thank you all so much for joining in today. We hope you've been blessed. Ima, thank you so much. It's been a wonderful session yeah. having you on. God bless it you. It was a learning experience for me as well. <laughs> yeah, yes. hey, thank Amen. God. Thank Thanks for listening today. I hope this has inspired you. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the podcast so you do not miss an episode. I hope to meet you again next week right here on the Business of Everyday podcast. See you.